about outdoor escapists and you probably can't tell by the blank wall behind me but I am actually not in Sydney anymore so um, I tried to get a film of the plane landing but I'm currently in Oslo in Norway so we're about to do a month-long trip there'll be kayaking there's going to be some hiking and just general tourist sightseeing as well um, not actually that jet lagged this is the morning after we arrived so we got in about lunchtime yesterday and um, just did some general walking around and all that sort of stuff and the key to that is like staying awake <laughs> it sounds you know obvious but um, we managed to stay up until about 8.39 I think 9.30 I went to sleep last night so it's really rough when you've had 30 hours of travel but um, yeah if you manage to stay up that late and then sleep through the night then you're fine the next day so we're going to go off and explore some Viking museums and some castles and stuff. There's an Oslo pass you can get on your phone. It's like an app that gets you in free public transport and free places to go. So we're going to give that a shot as well. And yeah, hopefully there'll be some cool stuff to film. So one of the things we saw when we were wandering around last night was a graveyard. We went through there with, it's apparently a significant graveyard. There's lots of graves of people that I hadn't heard of but who apparently matter um, so there's this one you guys are familiar with that painting everybody knows it the screen which like the woman and the big mouth and all that they've made masks of it, about it and everything like that um, so apparently the guy who painted that is buried there so we saw his grave and a whole bunch of other people that I didn't recognize but yeah it was really cool it was really quite a nice place to hang out and a lot of people were there having sort of picnics and there are a young couple on a date sitting on top of the hill surrounded by all these graves I mean you know that's a great first date good, good work guys and yeah that was really really cool but now we're gonna head off and explore some more <laughs> side of Oslo you have to catch a ferry across the water and then walk up a hill and we got to this museum and it is so full of people I'm trying to film a little bit do some pan shots and stuff here and there but yeah it's just so noisy there's so many tourists here there's like five tour buses and they just keep coming so this is probably the only vlogging I'm gonna do but yeah it's really really cool to see all the Viking ships and to read the history and all that sort of stuff so it's pretty rad but yeah, just come here yourself and beware of tourists. Okay, so like I said, it was pretty loud in there. So I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to use the footage that I did there. But yeah, the Viking Museum was pretty cool. Um, so there were about four big boats. There were some sleighs and stuff as well and lots of artifacts. Um, are we stopping? No. We're looking at berries. We're looking at berries. We're looking at berries. See, you can see these berries and the, the flowers. Pretty cool. <laughs> Do we know what they are? That was a really loud motorbike. We don't know what the berries are. But anyway, yeah, so the museum was pretty cool. Had lots of cool artifacts and stuff. A pair of shoes that looks very much like a pair of shoes that Rosie currently owns, which was <laughs> pretty cool. Fashion never changes. But, uh, <laughs> but there were a lot of tourists. It was so loud. There were so many people in there, like five tour buses all at once, and they kept coming in. So, yeah, um, not really an ideal environment to sort of like sit and contemplate the Vikings. More like a, oh, let's go look at a few artifacts and then go on to the next tourist trap. Yay. So, yeah, but now we're heading to the Kontiki Museum, which is a museum to the guy who did the original Kontiki tour. <coughs> I did not know this, typical millennial doesn't know anything. Um, apparently Kentiki is not short for 18 year old going to Europe on a bus getting really really drunk in a seedy pub in Berlin. Kentiki is actually a raft that this guy built and what he did was he wanted to see if it was possible to go from Peru 
to Polynesia using nothing more than the trade winds and the ocean currents. So he got balsa wood logs from the rainforest in Peru and he strapped them all together and he built a raft and him and a bunch of other guys just jumped on it and basically went to Polynesia, which was like the original sort of Kentucky um, was a Peruvian god that apparently travelled across the sea to Polynesia according to legend, so that's where the name came from. So yeah, I learned something really cool today and I've got a few videos of the raft which is awesome and yeah, it was pretty awesome. But now we've we had to run to catch the ferry. Um, so now we're back in the train station waiting for the rest of our party to join us and then we'll go have some lunch. So not in Oslo anymore. So we finished our time there with a trip to the Ekenshus Fortress. Um, free entry but you have to pay to go see the Holocaust memorials and a few other things like that. It was kind of cool, a bit pretty but not as inspiring as some of the other stuff that we saw. But anyway, um, we got in the car this morning and we're driving to Bergen. It's really weird being on the wrong side of the road. I'm not driving, I don't have an international driver's license, but everybody else is doing it and yeah, it's just like, yeah, really weird being on the wrong side of the road. But we have found possibly the, we've found the possibly second best place I've ever had lunch. I don't know, but just You can see behind me, the view is amazing. It's just fjords forever. And it's been like that pretty much the entire drive. It's so cool. And like, yeah, it's just, the scenery is just unbelievable. But yeah, anyway, so we're gonna continue our way towards Bergen and then Voss, I think. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I'm just in the back seat of the car, eating the food and admiring the view, pretty much. But yeah, this has been really cool so far. Oh my god, this place. Like, just tilt that up. Stopped along the way at a place called Borgendstave. Borgend? I've got a pamphlet. Borgendstave Church. So oh, there's a Reddit thread that marks it the most evil looking building on earth. It, it's kind of creepy looking, um, mostly because it's all black, but that's actually, they've put tar on the roof over the years. So this was built in, see if it says on my brochure, circa 1000 AD. So this church is over a thousand years old. Um, so yeah, they've put tar on the roof to try and stop the wood from rotting with all the really harsh weather that you get up here. So that's why it's black and creepy looking. But oh my God, it is stunning. This entire, this place is stunning. It's ridiculous. I just, I can't get over how beautiful everything has been today. And yeah, then you've got stuff like this. It's just, it's like something out of mythology or a fairy tale. It's ridiculous. But yeah, anyway, there's a couple more buildings. So if we come around this way, you can see there's another two buildings there and there's a big church that you can't see behind that one there. So I'm gonna go check those out. 